This is Farina boosting whole team's damage by a massive amount. And in my 3 years of making content for Genshin, I am honestly shocked how stuff like this makes Farina defy all expectations. And that's just one of many things you will see in this video. I'll also show you her amazing gameplay and tricks, what's the best way to boost damage with her, and of course, I'll showcase some game-changing teams I've discovered. Now, I know I started this video off by hyping up Farina, but I want to be real with you for a moment. Farina is nuts, but only if you understand how to fully utilize everything she has to offer. Because the thing is, she is a pretty risky character to play with, because she drains your whole team's health and rewards you heavily if you can fluctuate everyone's HP successfully. So with that in mind, let's start off by first taking a look at her personal potential. Now, for this showcase, she's equipped with Festering Desire Sword, a Golden Troop Artifact set that has HP Sands and Goblet, as well as Critical Rate Circlet, while her skill and burst are raised to level 10, and of course, she's Constellation Zero. Now, now, I know, I know, Festering Desire is an old weapon and not everyone has it, but you can go for Ferryman's Sword, or if you hate fishing, then Favonius instead. And regarding my choice of using an HP Goblet on her, due to how her burst buffs damage, HP Goblet can be a great choice for her, but the usual Hydro Goblet works too. But with this out of the way, let me introduce you to Farina's salon members. We have a seahorse, a gentleman octopus, and Miss Krabby. If you pull for Farina, they will be your best friends on the battlefield. And that's because when I press her skill button, she will first deal a decent amount of hydro damage, and then all three of the salon members are summoned and start mercilessly beating down your enemy, who most of the time will be someone you're attacking with the active character. Think of them as Xingqiu's swords or Yelan's dice attacks that come to life. Now, these salon members will stay on the battlefield for a whopping 30 seconds, while the cooldown is 20 seconds, so it's super easy to maintain them forever as long as you refresh the skill. But they will also generate one hydro particle every 3 seconds, so 10 particles total for the whole duration. And with this current build, Seahorse deals about 7,484 damage, Octopus 13,801 damage, and Krabby Patty herself unleashes the biggest hit of 19,192. If you just let them do their own thing for whole 30 seconds, the overall damage is about 346,000, which is already pretty good considering there are no buffs. Well, kinda. You see, as long as any teammate has HP above 50%, when these creatures attack, each of them drains your team's health by individual amount, as you can see here. And when this happens, depending on how many characters got drained, the damage increases by up to 40%. Usually, if you time your rotations correctly, it will be 40% most of the time. And in this case, if the salon members just do their own thing, and no one gets damaged or healed, just drained, this lasts for 22 seconds before the draining stops, and everyone is stuck at 50% HP. Soon, you'll see how this becomes essential for strong team comps, but for now, let's take a look at her other Hydro Companion, which is the Singer of Many Waters. But first, this video is sponsored by Arc Knights, a strategic RPG with a captivating story and refined art design. Set in a universe of Terra, you play as the doctor and command operators to fight against the enemies because your goal is to find a remedy for a menacing or apathy disease. Look, it's no secret I've covered this game on my channel before, and I love its generous gacha system, story, and amazing characters. And now there's a new side story event called Lone Trail. The Arc-01 project is nearing the end, but director Kristen Wright mysteriously vanishes with all of the equipment and staff, so your job is to find the director. Now, this event also brings four new operators. There's Mule Seas, a six-star vanguard who is an eccentric ecologist from Rhine Lab. She can summon her clones to fight for her and they're pretty insane. But then there's also Holheik, a six-star caster who can force targets to levitate when using her skill. Or how about Silence the Paradigmatic, another six-star support who has a unique talent that can save your teammates from dying and resetting their health back to one. But there's also a 5-star sniper, Melanite, who as a former weapons tester has perfected the art of causing big damage, so her bullets can pierce the enemies. And the best part, this event has a lot of good rewards. You can obtain Silence the Paradigmatics token, unique Rhinetech Echo Furniture, recruitment permits, battle records, and so much more. And of course, there's 7 new skins that are available during this event and 13 more skins made a return. So make sure to download Arc Knights by using my link in the description, get the new operators, and help support my channel. So, when summoned with Farina's skill, Singer of Many Waters will heal for about 4,483 HP. But this heals only the active character, and this heal happens once every 1.8 seconds or so. Honestly, you won't be seeing her much because Farina's teams excel with a dedicated healer. So, I can only imagine using this friendo when you're in deep sh emergency and need some healing. 
By the way, her healing interval can be reduced by 0.4% for every 1000 HP Farina has, or for a total of 16% at 40k HP, and conveniently, that's how much HP my build has. So in total, the singer can heal 17 times, or a total of 76,211 HP. Oh, and yeah, this passive talent works both ways. For every 1000 HP, the salon member's damage increases by 0.7%, or for a total of 28% at 40,000 HP max. Now, you might be wondering, where is the singer when salon members are causing havoc? Well, that's because Farina can switch between them by using her charge attack, and by doing this, she also changes her RK alignment. That's right, she can be either aligned to Usia or Numa. By default, when starting combat, she will be aligned with Usia, so salon members always get summoned. But you can quickly switch between them by using her charge attack, even when her water friends are deployed. Oh, and that gimmick of dealing Usia or Numa damage comes from Farina's normal attacks. But yeah, as I said before, at least in Abyss, 99% of the time I was using the salon members. But for quick healing and world exploration, Singer is pretty nifty. Speaking of which, man does Farina feel like the first character you can just go AFK and let her salon members handle everything. Their damage is pretty insane for world mobs, and they quickly take care of any world enemy, and I had a blast just doing my own thing like gathering materials or running around, while they mop up the floor around me. Heck, they even teleport together with you, so that's pretty cool. But moving over, Farina's Hydro application is pretty unique. When I'm vaporizing her salon member's damage, it seems like Seahorse vaporizes every second hit, so does the Octopus, while Miss Krabby can cause a reaction with every hit. Now, there are some weird exceptions, for example, sometimes Seahorse or Octopus might not cause a reaction, but I don't know, it could be because of some finicky stuff going on with the auras I'm trying to create reactions from. Either way, in 30 seconds, you can expect Farina's friends to cause about 21 reactions, which can fluctuate, but overall, it's about one hydro replication every 1.4 to 1.5 seconds. So, what does this mean? Basically, by herself, she doesn't apply Hydro fast enough. So units like Hu Tao cannot vaporize or damage from Farina's Hydro application. It might work for Yoimiya or Diluc, but it really depends on the team. And overall, if you need to rely on Farina's Hydro application, for the most part, it will be something to just cause Bloom reactions with, or maybe just a nice way to keep targets frozen. On the other hand, she can vape her damage pretty consistently in a team comp with your usual Kazuha, Xiangling, and Benny. But it's more like a fun way to play with her, and in my opinion, she feels more more natural in teams where she acts as off-field damage dealer and damage booster. And yes, I haven't even talked about how Farina gives a massive damage boost for everyone. I actually went ahead and tested her boosting with several characters, and so in this next part, let me show you the results. So, in a nutshell, Farina's burst boosts the whole team's damage and healing. When she uses her burst, it will deal decent amount of AoE Hydro damage. And then for 18 seconds, whenever someone's HP decreases or increases, Farina will obtain fanfare points, the exchange rate being 1% HP to 1 fanfare point. So, as an example, if Hu Tao uses her skill at 100% HP, she loses 30% of it, which is then equal to 30 fanfare points. The maximum amount of fanfare points that can be obtained is 300, so the team will need to lose and gain 300% HP, and 1 fanfare point is equal to 0.25% damage increase and 0.7% incoming healing. So at 300, that's a massive 75% damage boost and a nice 30% incoming healing for every single teammate. Let me repeat that again, this buff is applied to everyone, not just the active character. But you might be wondering, how the heck are you supposed to fluctuate HP this much? The answer, healers my friend, healers. And not just any healers, the best ones are those who can heal the whole team, and even better, if they can do it instantly. Some that come to mind are Jean and Mika, but Yao Yao is also amazing at this job, and so are a few others. Now, it's pretty hard to showcase whole team's damage, so let's just focus on a couple of units instead. First one we have is Nubelet. By himself, his laser beam or hydro cannon, however you call it, deals 20,490 damage per hit. Well, now, if we activate Farina's burst, deploy her skill, and then quickly switch to Jean's burst, almost immediately, the team reaches maximum amount of 300 fanfare points, thanks to this insane team-wide heal Jean provides. And the result? 27,000 damage per hit from the laser, or 32% damage increase. And yeah, this isn't a direct 75% boost as the max fanfare claims, but more like an elemental damage percent boost. 
Now, this was just Verena's buff. If only there was a way to boost the damage further, in a natural way. Oh right, Viridescent Venerary resistance shredding. Jean was actually using Maiden's beloved previously. So now, if I slap Vivi on her, suddenly this laser starts spewing out 34,588 damage per hit. That's about 69% damage increase for Nivellette compared to his unbuffed damage, which is nice. And remember, Farina's burst boosts everyone's damage, including her own, and she gets the same amount of damage boosted, which is 32% with max fanfare and 69% with Vivi Shred included on top of it, which again is a nice number. And if you use someone like Fischl or any other member, since Jean's damage is meh, you will also notice that big bump on other damage dealers. Maybe not with Vivi Shred included unless it's Electro, but still. So yeah, that's one way of fully maximizing Farina's burst boosting capabilities. Use a strong healer to instantly heal the whole team. Now, you might have noticed I started the fight when everyone was clinging onto their life. And that's because, as long as your team is below 25% HP, it's enough to gather all 300 points from just one strong team-wide heal. Obviously, Nivellet can heal himself by 50% as well, but Jean helped with obtaining that max fanfare buff really fast. And a few others could do this as well, like Mika or Yao Yao. Keep in mind during the first rotation in Abyss, assuming everyone's at full health, it will be pretty lackluster buffing, since you don't gain fanfare if the HP doesn't actually change, so that overhealing at full health won't gain fanfare points. But on second rotation onwards, thanks to Farina's salon members constantly draining health, it's very likely you'll start with everyone around 50% HP, maybe even below if enemies attack you, so gaining all 300 fanfare points will be much more feasible. Oh, and by the way, Farina's first passive talent does have a way to help with a bit of healing. When the active character receives healing and it overheals past 100% HP, Farina will trigger a heal for the whole team that will tick for 2 times in 2 seconds and restore 2% health each time. So, as an example, if Baiju here overheals himself with his skill, then 3 other members, including Farina, get healed for 4% total in 4 seconds. It's basically a nice way to help single target healers obtain fanfare points. Now, my previous method of obtaining fanfare points was fast and furious. What about if I gain them a bit slower? Well, Noelle, for example, can heal the whole team pretty consistently by using a combination of her skill and burst. But because it takes some time, you won't get to enjoy max damage buff and healing increase from fanfare points immediately. Because when I was trying this out, it took about 11 seconds to obtain max fanfare points, and that's with Noelle healing and Farina's HP draining. So with 7 seconds left of the burst's duration, Noelle was dealing 44% more damage damage compared to her unbuffed damage. But keep in mind that even with her first full normal attack combo, damage was already 17% better. With second combo, it was 37% better. And then third and fourth combo was done at max fanfare, so 44%. I really like the fact that even without instant team heal to reach max fanfare points, the damage slowly but steadily keeps increasing, and there's still quite a lot of time left to unleash maximum damage, especially in a team like this where Yalan's, Xingqiu's, and Frida's damage get boosted as well. Oh, and one last thing about fanfare points. The game doesn't give a super clear indication how many of them you have, but you will notice more of these water creatures showing up at the bottom of the screen. And if you reach max fanfare points, there will be some kind of a whoosh effect on screen. Luckily, if you want to get a definite answer, you can go into character stats during the burst and check their incoming healing bonus. If it's at 30%, that means max fanfare points have been achieved. And I think the screen edges also become sparkling as well. I don't know, it's hard to tell sometimes. All in all, there's two reliable ways to obtain maximum fanfare points, but it does require you to play a healer with Farina. You can either go really fast with a team-wide heal right after Farina's burst, or instead opt in for something like Noelle's consistent and periodic team-wide healing to get to that maximum boost. Now, in the middle of this, there are healers like Cookie, who will not help the team reach maximum boost just with her own healing, since it's single target, even when she does lose 30% HP when casting skill, to help out with fanfare generation. But then, you could throw in other strategies to help achieve the maximum of Farina's buff. Okay, I'm getting ahead of myself. Let me show you some of the teams to get a better idea of how much change Farina brings to them. So this is probably my favorite part of the video because Farina is an extremely flexible character and you can fit her into a ton of teams. When I was testing things out, I think I went through like 30 different variations and still counting. Obviously, as I mentioned, the most important team member Farina relies on is the healer. While Farina by herself can heal, you definitely want 99% of the time to use her salon members. Because not only does Farina dish out some serious damage, but those salon members also contribute towards building up fanfare points, which is extremely important. 
Now, I'll go through a couple of comps here, but very soon, I'll be releasing a new video that showcases top 5, maybe even top 10 Farina's teams you can build. So, make sure to subscribe to my channel with the bell notification enabled. Now, the first team is a classic remix of Hu Tao's Double Hydro comp, and it's made up of Hu Tao, Yao Yao, and Xing Chou. As I said before, Farina's Hydro application is not enough for Hu Tao to vapor damage, but with Water Dude, it's super easy to maintain it. And Yao Yao might sometimes cause Hu Tao to miss a vape, since there could be a leftover Pyro Aura on enemy, and that will make them start burning, but in that case, you can easily go for Jean or Mika instead, who as I explained before, can help you achieve these max fanfare points really fast. If it's Jean, then she will help shred enemies' hydro resistance with Viridescent Venerator, and if it's Mika, in addition to his team-wide heal, he will also provide healing over time to Hu Tao. Moving over, next one is Noelle's team. I found Triple Hydro to be really fun. Noelle can help you achieve that max fanfare pretty fast, and with other team members being Xing Chou and Yelan, this damage buff becomes relevant for every single team member. Another team to go for could be Quick Bloom, since as I said before, it's pretty hard for Cookie to help achieve max fanfare due to her heals being single target, so instead, I went for the team of Yao Yao, Alhatham, and Cookie. So now, Cookie can deal Hyper Bloom damage, while Alhatham and Farina can capitalize on that big damage boost. Keep in mind that this Farina's buff does not increase the damage of reactions, so Cookie's Hyper Blooms won't be affected, but on the other hand, Yao Yao's and Cookie's healing will be better. And then I tested many other teams. Freeze worked nicely when Farina kept applying Hydro with her Salon members, Nouvellette Comp was super comfortable to play, probably the easiest one to use when trying to score max fanfare points, and so on. Again, in a future video, I will talk about a lot of these teams in great detail, because there are a ton of caveats and builds that actually change when Farina is in the team, but for now, I think she's a complete game changer when it comes to revitalizing same old, same old team comps. Overall, I believe Farina makes Genshin feel fresh again, at least in terms of combat variety. The best thing about her, in my opinion, is that she makes healers feel super relevant in the game. So characters like Mika, who previously were seen as a failed experiment, now actually become super valuable in Farina teams. Seriously, here are some units who become relevant. Noelle, Jean, Mika, Barbara, Chi Chi for the love of god, yes, even Chi Chi is relevant now. I'm telling you. If you subscribe to Farina's way of thinking, then from now on, it's healing impact meta all the way. But there are a few things you need to be aware of. First of all, you will feel a lot more squishy in Abyss when using Farina. That HP drain from her salon members is pretty serious, so you will need a good healer to keep the team alive, or even several healers, like as I've shown you some examples before. Then there's the whole shtick with healing percentage. If Mika, for example, heals for 10,000, then this could be 60% health of a squishy character, but way lower healed amount of percent for a beefier character, like Nubilet. Basically, if you have HP scaling units in your team, it will be harder to gain fanfare points for them, so I don't know if this is legit yet, but it does feel like you are incentivized to play squishier teams with Farina, so that everyone can get healed faster and you can obtain max fanfare points. And yeah, the most important thing about Farina teams is that in the Abyss, the first rotation when you start at maximum health will not feel good. Second rotation onwards, or anytime you start a fight with your team when they are at least hovering around 50% HP, then Farina's burst buff will provide the full boost you can expect to obtain, so keep that in mind. Overall, I think Farina is amazing, but at the same time, a bit niche. Every single team you build, you'll want a healer, and that requires a bit of thinking of how you need to set up your rotations, but honestly, most of the time, it will be just use Farina's burst, then switch to a healer, activate their heals, and then move onwards to DPS characters. Anyway, I hope you found this video useful, and I'd really appreciate it if you could check out today's sponsor, Arknights, by using my link in the description. And by doing this, you'll help support my channel, which I'm always super grateful for. Thanks again for watching, and... See you next time.